this is the Fearless Agent Podcast, where you learn how to make way more money fast selling real estate with your host, the fearless agent himself, Bob Leffler. And good day to you. This is your lovely host, Bob Leffler, here at the Fearless Agent Podcast for real estate sales professionals just like you where we explain that every single thing you've been taught by the entire real estate industry is wrong and you will make lots, lots more money in way, way less time by doing the exact opposite. Okay, so today's topic, I just want to start talking a little bit about working your sphere of influence, the people who already know you, like you, trust you, asking for referrals. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about my story. I, uh, I don't know if I'm different than most people. I think I am. Why would I be doing this if I was the same as everybody else, right? But uh, I am uh, by nature uh, a bit of an introvert. So I'm the guy who's uncomfortable at a party. I'm the most uncomfortable guy at a party, no doubt about that. It's just not my thing. So I would uh, – and why am I on the radio doing a podcast? It seems crazy, but you know that's, that's how life works out. So everybody has friends. Everybody has relatives. Everybody has you know, the family. You've got acquaintances. You've got people that you do business with, people that could refer business to you. Uh, and then there's people that are strangers that – you know, you could cold call. You could cold call up and down the street through a neighborhood and get lots of business that way. So here's the plan for prospecting. If you're, if you're going to do telephone prospecting to get listings, here's the, here's the plan that I would daily use, okay? So start your day calling uh, your sphere, people who know you, like you, trust you, anybody, an acquaintance at any level that you could describe yourself to and they would know who you are over the phone, asking them for referrals. Then go to any new for sale by owners. Do not call old stale for sale by owners, just the new ones. Then go to any new expireds and canceleds. Don't do the old stale ones, just the new ones. Then go to any follow-up calls from previous cold calling where you're calling up and down the street through neighborhoods. And that's where the real money gets made in real estate. And then then just spend the rest of the day as many hours as you possibly can cold calling to fill up your pipeline for the future. And and by doing that, you're always going to be earning – you could earn less than $400 an hour while while doing that. So – if you're like me, you're either – or most people would be either more comfortable calling their friends and acquaintances or they would be more comfortable calling uh, total strangers. So think about it. Would you rather call your friends who are nice and they know you and they like you and they trust you asking for referrals or would you rather – get on the phone and call total strangers or call for sale by owners or call expireds who you do not know. Which would you prefer? Just go ahead and think, which would you prefer? Okay. Most people would much rather call their friends who know them, like them, trust them. You know, it's a more pleasant conversation. I actually am the opposite. I would much rather call the nastiest FISBO, the nastiest expired, the cold call guy that's going to hang up on me and swear at me, which rarely ever happens, but it does happen, uh, then call my friends asking for referrals. And I don't know why that is, but it is. So some people are one way, some people are the other. So I remember when it was recommended to me by the person who I trusted the most in the real estate world that I should prospect for referrals by calling my friends, my family, my business acquaintances and and general acquaintances. Uh, So I thought, "Ah, you know, that doesn't really seem like what I want to do, but I'm going to give it a try. So the secret to it is to have a comfortable dialogue and, uh, you know, what what am I going to say that's not going to make that feel – ridiculous or weird or uncomfortable for me or even worse, uncomfortable for them. So I want to make it comfortable for them 
to give me a referral. And, you know, there's coaches out there that say things like, oh, by the way, I'm never going to be too busy for your referrals. Well, like, yeah, you better not be too busy for my referrals. So that that's insanity. That None of that has anything to do with sales or marketing or anything that literally makes sense in the universe. So if I'm going to call somebody, um, what I was taught is that uh, – you're going to call them up and get right down to business. So number one, write this down, skip the chit-chat, okay? Get right down to business. This is a business call. So if I called you and I was going to ask you for a referral, I'd say, hey, this is Bob. How you doing, right? And then I'd say, I'm, I'm, the reason I'm calling is I have a favor to ask you. Do you mind? Now, what would you say? You'd say uh, it. You're either going to say no, I don't mind, or you're going to say it depends. And I'm going to say you're wearing depends. No, I'm not going to say that. Okay, so that's the only two possible answers you're going to get. Hey, the reason I'm calling you is I got a favor to ask you. Do you mind? And you're going to say no, I don't mind, or it depends. I say, well, you know, I'm in real estate, and I'm expanding my business, and you know, I could use your help. So what I was wondering is if you happen to run into somebody with a real estate need, maybe somebody who's thinking about buying a house, maybe somebody who's thinking about selling their house, maybe somebody who wants to get rich by investing in real estate, would you even feel comfortable referring them to me? So one of the one of the reasons people don't like cold calling is they think there's a lot of rejection. There really isn't actually, but they think there is. Um, well, this is about as rejection-free as it could get because anybody who knows you, likes you, trusts you, uh, they're not going to – even if they wouldn't refer somebody to you, they're going to say, oh, of course I would, right? So it's 100 percent rejection-free. Now, if somebody was not going to refer somebody to you, what would the number one reason be? And what it would probably be is that they are worried that you might screw it up and make them look bad. So we're going to have this little little thing called the brand promise, okay? So just so you know, uh, whenever you refer somebody to me, I'm, I'm, I'm always going to treat them like gold. I'm always going to treat them like family. I'm never going to put any pressure on anybody. And by the way, I'm going to keep them, keep you informed every step of the way. Is that fair enough? And they're going to say, oh, I know you would. Sure you would, Bob. I know that. And that's going to make them feel better about giving you a referral. So in Fearless Agent, what we do is teach you this whole big dialogue to – to get you to be a rock star on the phone at at getting referrals, and I'll just I'll just give you my uh, my first experience at that when when I thought okay I'm going to give this a try for the very first time I go to my uh, database and you know pull up the people that are my friends family acquaintances so I call the first call was to a guy by the name of Roger Dam was his name and the whole Dam family by the way. So he's a friend of mine from my church. Uh, his kids are my age and, you know, so I've been cold calling him for years, mailing to him for years and not only has he never used me as a realtor, he has bought and sold two houses and did not use me. But he just popped up, not that I'm bitter, right? No big deal. So uh, he popped up first. So I call Roger. I say, hi, Roger. It's Bob Leffler. How are you doing? He goes, hey, Bob, what's going on? I said, you know, uh, I'm calling because I got a favor to ask you. Do you mind? He goes, no, I don't mind. I said, uh, listen, I um, you know, I'm in real estate and I'm expanding my business and I could use your help. And uh, what I was wondering is if you happen to run across somebody who's thinking about buying a house or selling a house or, you know, investing in real estate to get rich, uh, would you even feel comfortable referring to, 
to me. He goes, oh, he goes, of course I would. You know I would. I said, well, I just want you to know, Roger, that if you ever refer somebody to me, I'm going to absolutely treat them like gold. I'm going to never put any pressure on anybody. He goes, hey, Bob, let me stop you right there. He goes, you know what? He goes, we sold our house and bought another house and uh, we did not use you and it didn't go well and we regretted not using you. And I was thinking, well, it was two, but you know who's keeping tracks? So no big deal. But I, I said, well, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to hear that. He goes, yeah. He goes, I absolutely would use you, and uh, I know you would do a great job. You never have to worry about that. So I go, thank you. And then I went on with the rest of the dialogue that we teach you in fearless agent coaching, and then, then I followed up with a letter. Okay, so the, the we have this letter that matches the dialogue and everything, and. And uh, that really gets you more business than the the phone dialogue, but you have to send the letter after you've made the call. So, But it's got secret words in it that are really great. So then uh, about two weeks later, he calls me up and he says, you know what? He goes, uh, I've got this friend of mine in Delaware, business acquaintance, and uh, he's got some land in North Scottsdale that uh, – that uh, he wants to sell. I said, hey, great. I'd be happy to help him. I'll give him a call and again. And he goes, no, no. He goes, I, he goes he's already going to list it with you. I said, what do you mean? He goes, I've already sold him on you. He goes, he's, he's, he's going to pay whatever you charge. He's going to do whatever you tell him to do. I've already told him you were the greatest realtor in the world. And all this. I go, okay, great. You know, so I call the guy up. And uh, that is the way it went. You know, I listed his land, 10 percent commission, and it sold pretty quickly. It was like a horse property kind of a thing. And, uh, you know, big commission check, uh, send Roger a a gift and everything. And then um, about three months later, um, Roger's Roger's wife's sister – passed away and she was in a seniors adult uh, condominium uh, situation so she passes away they call me up I list that and sell that for them so here's here's the moral to the story uh, I'm uncomfortable calling friends and relatives and people I know asking for refer f- for referrals but after years of doing it the realtor way, cold calling these folks. I got less than no business. And and then after doing it, making that very first referral call using the fearless agent dialogue, I I got uh, you know two closings right off and I'm and I'm just using that very first call as an example. I got many, many more after that. So here's what I would say. If you're uncomfortable calling, you know, friends and family and acquaintances asking for referrals, if you have the right words that make it easy for them to refer you. Uh, And then the other thing that happens is when I'm cold calling, and by the way, I I think I may have mentioned this before, but you need right now business and you need future business, okay? So that's what I want to talk about, right now business and future business. And and just, just so you guys know, Uh, On any of these podcasts, if any of this stuff makes sense to you, if you're earning less selling real estate than you wish you were and you're open to the idea of having some help with that, if you'd like to learn more, you know, you can always call me anytime. I want you to call me on my cell phone number at 480-385-8810. And, you know, let's just see. I'm never going to high pressure you into buying coaching or anything. We don't need to do that. We got plenty of people that, that know it's a good fit. They know they can't. If you like what I do, you can't get it anyplace else. I'm going to get you sooner or later. I don't need to, I don't need to close you. But let's just see if you and what you're trying to do and what we do here at Fearless Agent, if it would be even a good fit for you. So again, you can call me at 480-385-8810. I love talking to realtors. I don't want you to ever think you're bothering me. Please don't email me. Please don't text me. Always call me. There is no texting or emailing in sales, so I practice what I preach. And if you can't afford coaching but you wish you could, uh, you know, go to fearlessagent.com. Watch the free webinar. It's 45 minutes. Take lots of notes. Go to our video training page. And my guarantee to you is this, that – 
Those free videos will be better coaching for free than you would ever pay any other coach in America any amount of money for. And if you ever have a question, you can always call me because we want to help you for free so that you can afford our coaching as soon as possible. So we're here for you either way. And again, it's 480-385-8810 and go to fearlessagent.com. So the the way the real estate business works when you're telephone prospecting, okay, is you've got right now money and you've got future money. So I want you to make right now money. And for some of you, the future money is less important than the right now money, okay? Some of you are broke and you need money right now. So where does the right now money in real estate come from? So here's where it comes from and you want to write these down. One, one source of right now money would be calling your sphere, asking for referrals. The other would be calling for sale by owners. That, would, that can get you right now money. There's calling uh, expireds and cancels. That would be right now money. There's cold calling up and down the street through neighborhoods. That, that couldn't be right now money. And then there's uh, door knocking, okay, weather permitting. So that would be right now money. And then there's holding open houses. You can make right now money holding open houses. So for example, I teach a dialogue that you say at an open house that no one else has. And I had one of my coaching students book seven listing appointments in one open house. I had another guy book six buyer appointments where the buyers were coming into the office after they were pre-approved through his lender from one open house. So uh, that's right now money. Okay, so those are all the sources of right now money. But even if you need right now money, you're going to need your future to be built. So how is your future going to be built? Well, it's going to be built on your sphere and cold calling. The, the FISBOs uh, for sale by owners and the expireds and canceleds and the open houses are right now money, but they don't build your future. Your, fil- your future is going to be built on your sphere and cold calling uh, or door knocking, if, you know, again, weather permitting. I'm in Scottsdale, Arizona, so if I were to go outside and door knock, I would spontaneously combust in five minutes, so that probably doesn't work for me. If you're in Houston, forget it. You'll be, you'll be, it'll be flop sweat city. Some of you could door knock, but uh, not me or them. So the, the idea is when you're, when you're cold calling – so I had this you know, big list of, of sellers that uh, I cold called through. And my coaching students have this big, giant list of sellers that they're cold calling through. And you, you know, come back around in a big loop. So you're calling them once every six months, once every year, asking if they want to sell their house. So at some point, you will, you know, and you're leaving messages, by the way. So when I'm leaving messages every time I'm calling through the big list, then you're you come back around and you're calling again and then you come back around and you're calling again, you know, year after year. And then at some point on one of those live calls that you have making your cold calls um, – and I'm not talking about follow-up calls from cold calls. I'm talking about just going through the loop and it's another cold call to the same person six months later or a year later because they showed up on the list again. At some point, because you've left messages – Maybe you sent them mail, probably not, but maybe you did. They're going to say, oh, yeah, Bob, you're that real estate guy. And now I realize they know me as being differentiated from the other real estate guys. So once they say, oh, yeah, Bob, yeah, I know who you are, then I immediately switch gears and don't do the cold call. So the cold call goes – uh, you know, I'm Bob Leffler. I'm with, you know, XYZ Realty and I was just calling to see if you might be thinking of selling your house. So when I'm getting ready to make that call and they go, oh, yeah, Bob, how you doing? You're the postcard guy or, yeah, you left me a me- – you've been leaving me messages for years or they know it's me. Then I don't do the cold call and I just say, hey, uh, the reason I'm calling you this time is I got a favor to ask you, do you mind? And then I go right into the referral lead generating 
dialogue. And that way, these people who I'm following up with or are, are just in the big list, I may end up earning one or two or three commissions from because they've referred me people before they ever decide to sell their house. So once they've referred somebody to me, I don't have to worry if they're going to use me when uh, when they're ready to go. They obviously are. So – and again, if you're uncomfortable ca calling and asking for referrals like I would, I would just say do it uh, until you're comfortable. And again, I always say this. Life is – you know, I don't want anybody – the secret to life, I always say, is not doing what you love. It really is avoiding what you hate. So if you think of all the sources of business, again, you've got calling your sphere, asking for referrals. And I'm not talking about the passive sources. You know, there's passive sources of business where you're spending lots of time and energy on advertising schemes that may or may not work and they literally never do. And – you know, buying leads and all that kind of junk that fearless agents never do. But on the proactive side where you're actually going to make it happen, there's calling your sphere, asking for referrals. There's uh, cold calling up and down the street. There's cold. There's door knocking, weather permitting. There's calling for sale by owners, calling expireds, holding open houses, and there are no other things. So of those things, which – would you be unwilling to do no matter how much money you make? In other words, if I was going to pay you $400 an hour, which is the least you could make on prospecting, which of those would you be unwilling to do? So that's fine. Don't do those. I'll coach you to do the other ones. I have people that I coach. They say, I don't ever want to take a listing again as long as I live. I only want to work with buyers. That's fine. Do those people tend to make less money than the people who focus on listings only? Yes. But at some point, if it's going to suck the life out of you, don't do what's so unpleasant you can't stand it. So if you're unwilling to work with sellers and you're unwilling to work with buyers, if you're unwilling to do the things that would get you sellers – and you're unwilling to do the things that were, would get you buyers, well, then probably real estate is not for you. But if you're willing to do either of those two things, uh, then then you're, you can make a very good living. You know, you can literally get rich by real estate standards uh, doing exactly what I tell you to do. It's going to be easy. So the the real secret to sales is selling is not telling. So when we get trained in the real estate business by the industry and all these other coaches that are out there, they're always telling us to do things that are the opposite of what we should be doing. They're always telling us to say things that don't even make sense if you know anything about sales and they're uncomfortable to say. So if you want if you want if you want to make a lot of money in real estate, here's the here's the secret. Be nice to the seller. Care about the seller. If you're working with the buyer, care about the buyer. So what is it that the buyer cares about? Does the buyer care about getting a good deal? Yeah, if you ask 100 buyers, uh, what's more important, getting the right house or getting uh, a good deal? About 90 of them are going to say, well, getting a good deal. And then if you say, well, if you how would you know if you got a good deal? And say, well, I guess I got the right house and uh, we paid a fair price. So the, the reality is buyers care about getting the best house of all the houses that are available to them. So when you care about the buyer, that's what you're going to do. You're going to come up with a step-by-step -step system or you're going to use the fearless agent step-by-step -step system that guarantees them they're going to get the best house of all the houses that are available to them. And when when you fall in love with that best house and you don't want to lose it to another buyer, you're probably going to overpay for it just like I overpaid for my house. I'm th I'm thanking God every day that I overpaid for my house so that I don't have some other guy living in my house. And I'm glad I'm not waking up every day explaining to my wife why we're not living in her favorite house when I'm a realtor for good goodness sakes. So, what does the seller want? Pretty much all sellers want the exact same thing, okay? What sellers want is they want to sell their house 
and end uh, for more than it's actually worth. So if I interviewed 100 sellers and I said, hey, here's a survey question. Would you rather sell your house at fair market value, less than fair market value, or more than fair market value? What do you think all 100 are going to pick? Yeah, all 100 of them are going to say, yeah, I'd like to sell my house for more than fair market value. Okay, so if I had an amazing strategy, and I do, by the way, and it would 1,000% guarantee you that the buyer would grossly overpay for your house. And by the way, no other agent has this strategy, and you already know that. And that buyer would be happy they did overpay for it, and you would end up with tens of thousands of extra dollars. Would you want to hear about it, or are you allergic to money? They want to hear about it. So the secret to sales is selling is not telling. Selling is asking. On our next podcast show, we're going to go into that in great detail. Why selling has nothing to do with telling. Why it is about asking the right magic question and that that couldn't possibly have the wrong answer. So the main thing I want you guys to do is, is to know that you can always – call me. Okay. Once again, I want to thank you for joining us today. Please, again, visit us at fearlessagent.com. You can call me directly anytime at 480-385-8810. Please do give us a review of this podcast on iTunes, but only if you liked it. Uh, And then visit us on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, anywhere you happen to see me in town, Starbucks, whatever. Um, and we're everywhere you go. But as always, until next week, I want all of you guys to have fun. If it isn't fun, don't do it. Always be humble, and most of all, be fearless. Thanks. Uh